Welcome back friends and we are on grammar. So, let me give you, let me start with an example. If I ask you that uh, I ask John if uh, the class is on tomorrow or if there is going to be a class tomorrow. Now, I asked someone something, do you think this sentence would end with a, uh, with a full stop? or with a question mark. Think about it. I asked Dr. John if there would be a class tomorrow. Is this sentence going to end with, will this sentence end with a question mark or with a full stop? That is the question. So, uh, we will continue with our grammar and today's topics are punctuations and types of sentences simple sentence, comp compound sentence and complex sentences. So, our objectives would be to have some kind of familiarity with punctuations, particularly full stop, comma, semicolon, colon and question mark. We are also going to get introduced to three major types of sentences, simple, compound and complex. We will also do some phrasal verbs, some exercises related to phrasal verbs. So, let me start with what is a phrasal verb. Now, something takes off or something has to be looked in or something has to be or something is or someone is looked down upon. All these are phrasal verbs. There is a difference between look up and look into. There is a difference between uh, take up and take in or take off and take in. There is a difference between uh, let us say uh, put off and put up. You are put up, you put up with someone, you are put off with someone, you are put off by someone. So, what are the, what, what are phrasal verbs and what do they bring to the table where language is concerned in business communication? Because business English of course, is uh, um, of a higher level, of a higher order as compared to other genres. Okay. So, in business English, you are not just dealing with a specific domain, but business English could be related to several areas, entrepreneurship, um, hotel industry and uh, Mm, and you know uh, things that deal with any aspect of communication, uh, particularly with in business situations. So, it is not it is imperative in business English communication to have some degree of control over phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are done or used in higher order communication, advanced order communication. Of course, if you are learning basic English, basic usage, it is not, you, phrasal verbs may not help you or may not be of relevance to you, but when it comes to business English communication, yes, phrasal verbs, idiomatic language, these are important aspects. Remember, a phrasal verb is a combination of words, usually a verb plus preposition and adverb or adverb when used together, they take on a different meaning to that of the original verb. For example, stand is different from stand by or stand in, check is different by check in. You check in and you check out, but you check something, you check your uh, what date it is today or check the time, but when you check in and check out of a hotel, you are um, arriving and departing from a hotel, check in, check out. Yeah? So, the, the preposition makes all the difference in the world. Changing the preposition or adverb will change the meaning of the verb as we just saw looked up or looked down upon or look into or look forward. So, look up is the act or process of looking up something like look me up whenever you are in Chennai next time you uh, find me, try to contact me. When you look up something in uh, on the internet, as I always keep telling you, often keep telling you, look, look this word up, look this up, which means the process of 
checking something or looking up something. When you look forward to something, you are uh, happy about something that something is going to happen. I am looking forward to uh, your speech tomorrow. I am looking forward to my trip tomorrow. Okay? So, we look forward to something pleasant, something happy. A good way to learn phrasal verbs is in learning by context. When you come across one while reading a text, do note them down in complete sentence or paragraph and these things will help you understand the different contexts in which phrasal verbs are used. This is a tip that I would like to give you for everything that is new to you or everything that you find challenging. Look it up, note down somewhere and keep going back to it. Remember the same phrasal verb can have different meanings for example, take in, take up, take off uh, and all these things are uh, made or uh, derived from the root word or root verb that is take, but the preposition changes the meaning. Look at these examples, for example, you have pass out. Now, pass out is generally used as um, finishing your education. I passed out uh, from the college in 1980 whatever, okay, but that is not correct. You graduate from college. You do not say this is the passed out batch. Pass out means the teacher could pass out the answer papers, one could pass out in the heat. Then pass out means here. So, pass out the papers means distribute and pass out in the heat means uh, fainted, losing consciousness. Consciousness, But pass out which is very uh, a very common mistake in Indian language, Indian English is uh, uh, incorrectly, inappropriately used for graduating. The correct usage is I graduated out of college, not passed out of college. Passed out in the strictest, sen strictest sense is used for uh, losing your consciousness. You pass out in the heat, you fail, uh, sorry, you faint, you fainted in the heat. Uh, another example is bring up, parents bring up a child and one could bring up an idea in a me meeting or do not bring that up again, we meaning do not start that conversation again, I do not want to hear about that. Let us look at this flow chart or this ripple diagram. Uh, uh, for example, you look at the main word look and then look at the way it can be used. Look up, look away from something look out, look out for forged notes or forged notes or forged documents, look ahead, look out, look ahead to, a, to plan a meeting, look up to someone. If you have a lot of respect, I look up to your, to my father, right? To look up something, not look up to something. So, that means to search for something or someone or look back that is an act of memory. When I look back, I find that it was not such a bad idea. Now, um, we have just done a ripple diagram and let us look at some of the ways in which phrasal verbs can be used. The media chose to look away as the administration grew intolerant. Here are some trends, businesses should look out for next summer and look ahead to these business organization milestones. Okay. Um, so, this uh, these are some of the ways in which we can use. Now, um, let us look at the first exercise of the day. What I would like you to do is use the dictionary to find three or four more definitions of phrasal verbs with look. Make a ripple diagram of your own as we have done here and write a sentence each illustrating the usage of these phrasal verbs. So, this is an exercise that would help you to improve your vocabulary or knowledge of phrasal verbs. Let us look at the answers here three or I mean just giving some kind of clues 
three of the other phrasal verbs could include look down on, look, look forward to, look into. For example, she looks forward to meeting with the president, one should not look down on people employed in certain occupations. Madhav said he would look into the matter immediately. Please look up these words if you find uh, or if you have any doubts. Now, let us look at the second exercise. Complete these sentences containing look in any way that seems appropriate to you. Students across the world look dash Stephen Hawking. The president looks dash catching up with his American counterpart on issues ranging from the crisis in the global market to combating climate changes. A look dash the world of venture capitalists. Some nations are looking dash at a post growth economy. A look dash at the legacy of Henry Ford. And answers are first look up to. You look up to Stephen Hawking's and the, spe the meaning is also given here to admire to when you look up to someone. Look forward to the second answer, look into that is investigate, have an enquiry. Looking ahead to, to think about the future, one must always look ahead. That is different from looking forward to and look back to think about the past or at certain events of the past. Here are some phrasal verbs that are commonly used in professional settings. So, draw up, see this is not a definitive or an exhaustive list, but this is these are some of the uh, phrasal verbs that can be of use. So, draw up, lay off, keep up, sort out, fill in, zero in, figure out, run by, take over, deal with. This is not the as you would realize, this is not the kind of English that people generally use in their everyday very common vernacular kind of language. However, in business communication which is of a, a slightly advanced level, you do need to have some familiarity with phrasal verbs. And here are your answers, draw up to prepare a draft version of, keep up uh, sorry, lay off the act of terminating the employment of an employee or a workforce. The workers were laid off, right? Keep up to continue or persist doing something. I can, cannot keep up with uh, my siblings. Sometimes you do feel that, that you are unable to keep up with your classmates, you are not able to match pace with your classmates. Sort out is to find an answer or solution for something and fill out is to add information such as your name or address in the empty space or an official document. And zero in is to aim something directly at someone or something. Sometimes you also say I will zero in on this answer that means I will mark this answer. Figure out is to discover or determine, I will try to figure out a solution. Run by or run past is to present as for evaluation. Get over is to recover, deal with to make business agreements with someone. From here we will move on to punctuations. Punctuations uh, often change the meaning of a sentence, a wrongly or a misplaced punctuation mark can change the entire meaning of a sentence. If you have any doubts about how to use punctuations, the first and the uh, most basic book would be High School English Grammar and Composition book by Wren and Martin. It is a definitive book. If you feel that you are very confused about grammar and punctuations, this is the go to kind of a book. Here, Ren and Martin define punctuation as the right use of putting in points or stops in writing. And that book lists out the principal stops like full stop or period, comma, please look at, at the slide here and the punctuation mark is given in the bracket, semicolon, colon, note of interrogation or question mark note of exclamation or exclamation mark, 
as already said, use of punctuation creates a sense of clarity in sentences. If misplaced in a, a sentence or a text, they may lead to lot of confusion. Now, first let us just quickly recap or go through various uh, punctuation marks. So, full stop or period, it is used to mark the end of a sentence that is the most commonly used uh, punctuation mark uh, that is the most popular use of the full stop at the end of a sentence, which is not a question or an exclamation mark. So, one generally uses a full stop to break sentences at the end of a complete or logical thought. For example, uh, a futures contract is an agreement between two parties, wherein the former agrees to purchase from the latter a fixed number of shares at a specific time in the future for a predetermined price. These details are agreed upon etcetera and here is a full stop at the end of the sentence. So, here the sentence rambles on and lacks bre break in between, it can be split into two complete sentences. Okay, so, that is how you should be able to do and here you are given an exa the example. A futures contract is an agreement between two parties, wherein the former agrees to purchase from the latter a fixed number of shares at a dash etcetera and these details are agreed upon when the transaction takes place full stop again. So, two breaks in this sentence. I am sure you will agree that this second sentence or the second example makes much better reading. It is, it is less confusing, re, less rambling and makes a better sense. Full stops are also used to mark abbreviations. So, PhD, MA, MBBS and people's name TK and RK and all those. So, these we use generally we use punctuation marks. Sometimes people decide to do away with the punctuation abbreviations sorry uh, the abbreviation marks and sometimes people decide to do away with these uh, full stops punctuation marks uh, for marking abbreviations which is also acceptable so as long as you are consistent. Coming to the second important punctuation mark that is the comma and comma represents the shortest pause. It indicates to the reader that there is a pause. Sometimes we pause while we are speaking, we do not ramble on. So, you can, you can perhaps uh, imagine commas in the speaker's language that perhaps the person is pausing and here is a comma. Remember the general rule of thumb to follow while using the comma is the fewer the better. Do not overdo commas. Now, here are some basic rules. A comma should not link together two complete sentences by itself. The last date of EOI has been extended to this. Those interested in empanelment may send EOI in a sealed envelope to the head office. Here the sentence is actually two complete sentences. For example, the last date of EOI has been extended to this and those interested in empanelment may send EOI in a sealed envelope to the head office. Punctuation um, that is comma, um, commas are used to link together two independent clauses. Clauses is this uh, smallest grammatical unit expressing a complete idea. So, look at the sentences, if the markets are risky comma she will not invest. I love history comma, but I also love geography. Commas are used in lists, for example, here you can look at the example, Dove, Nord, Lux and Lipton are Unilever products. We have comma in places where it is used to tie together two sentences list linked together by a coordinating conjunction. We have already done coordinating conjunctions in some of the earlier uh, examples. So, let us look at this sentence, bitcoins are the new rage of the financial world and governments are scrambling to make laws to govern it. 
So, linked together by a coordinating conjunction and it is used to set apart non-restrictive elements. Non-restrictive elements add information to the sentence, but are not essential to the meaning of the sentence. One could remove them from a sentence and the sentence will would still hold meaning. Mr. Warren Buffet, a busy man, eats his meals on the go. Mark graduated from Harvard, my alma mater. So, what are we doing? We are separating using a comma to set apart non-restrictive elements that add more information to the sentence, but are not too uh, essential. Mark graduated from Harvard can be a complete sentence, but we are um, separating my alma mater using a comma it is just an extra bit of information. Now, coming to the next punctuation mark that is semicolon. A semicolon, semicolons are used to separate clauses that are loosely related. For example, we live to achieve personal goals, each individual's goals could be different. And then here is a piece on semicolons from the New York Times, the famous newspaper, but I cannot agree that semicolons represent absolutely nothing. They represent for me anyway the pleasure in discovering that no piece of writing advice should ever be adopted mindlessly. And then it is also used to separate items in list which already contains commas. I met with Liza, the company C, uh, CTO, Mark, the head of sales and Mina, my new assistant. So, we are separating items from a list. So, that is also one way of yeah, using this punctuation mark. And colon, colon introduces a quotation. Mega kept saying, I really want a cat. You can also use a comma here, but colon can also be used. It was Shakespeare who said, if music be the food of love, play on. So, look at the use of colon, you cannot be using semicolon here. Colon is also used to indicate examples or lists, read the following and then you use a colon. There are often two choices before you. So, there is a colon to run away or to fight it out. The fundraisers is scheduled to be uh, held across three cities, Venice, Paris and Barcelona. Colon is also used between sentences that are grammatically independent, but closely connected. You can come pick me up now, I am feeling much better. And then question mark. Question mark is used instead of a full stop after a direct question. So, there has to be a direct question. So, the, the example I gave at the beginning of this, it is not a direct question. I asked Professor John if I could. So, that sentence is not a direct question. It will end with a full stop, not a question mark. Now, look at the, the way question marks are used. When are the samples ready? Should I stay or should I go? So, these are direct questions. They require a punctuation mark that is a question mark. You should understand that since question marks replaces uh, questions question mark replaces the full stop at the end of a sentence, you should capitalize the word that follows it. So, could you come with me question mark and there is an emergency at work. So, just like a full stop you have a capital, the uh, capital word that follows it. Do not use a question mark after the end of an indirect question. I wonder if the market would open early today, so there is no question mark here. Here is an exercise for you, use the appropriate punctuation marks in the following sentences. The source is given at the bottom. Climate breakdown soil loss, the collapse, collapse of habitats and species, the sea of plastic all are driven by rising consumption. How in a world in which everyone is supposed to aspire to high incomes, can we avoid turning the earth on which all prosperity depends into a dust ball? 30 years ago, it was ridiculous to buy bottled water, where tap water is clean and abundant today. Worldwide, we use a million plastic bottles a minute. But they are all proxies for the real issue, perpetual growth on a planet that is not growing. Look 
and pay attention to the fact how lack of punctuation marks uh, sort of distort and uh, sort of you know haze the meanings of these sentences. Um, the answer here are the answers climate breakdown comma soil loss the collapse of habitats and species comma the sea of plastic is a list all are driven by rising consumption full stop. Num second sentence how comma in a world in which everyone is supposed to aspire to higher incomes can we avoid turning the earth comma on which all prosperity depends into a dust ball full stop. 30 years ago comma it was ridiculous ridiculous to buy bottled water comma where tap water is clean and abundant full stop. Today worldwide we use a million plastic bottles a minute full stop. And last one you have to have a capital because it begins the sentence begins with a capital letter. So, but they are all proxies for the real issue colon perpetual growth on a planet that is not growing. From here we move on to the next topic types of sentences simple compound and complex sentences. Now, remember a good way of writing involves varying sentences in the text. There are three kinds of sentences simple complex and compound a good writing should have a mix of all these types. Every sentence has two parts we have already done some of this in our earlier classes you have a subject you have verb you have predicate the subject part which names a person or thing predicate the part which tells uh, one th uh, something about the person or a thing. For example, the house is painted yellow. So, you know which is uh, the subject and which is the predicate. All roads lead to Rome. Now, simple compound and complex sentences how do we define them? A simple sentence has only one subject and one predicate the dog ran, the teacher spoke, the teacher corrected um, the, the writing papers. Uh, Zainab and Paul in eight Gulab Jamun. A simple sentence can also be called as an independent clause. Therefore, these sentences can be part of either compound or complex sentences, which also can be a complete sentence in itself. A compound sentence is a sentence made up of two independent clauses linked together by a coordinating conjunction, such as and for, etc. Also, but now, uh, if you look at examples of compound sentences, here is a here are some sentences for you. Irene wanted to reach on time, but the train was late. The sun hadn't set, and we could see, see our way. So these are compound sentences. Two sections are joined together using a coordinating conjunction, and both parts of the sentence make complete sentence meaning by themselves. A complex sentence on the other hand is made of an independent clause and one or more dependent clause. A dependent clause lacks one of the elements that would make it a complete sentence. So, here are some examples. For example, Ganesh arrived at the station after his friends had left. Here in this sentence the dependent clause is after his friends had left which would not stand alone as a complete sentence. And when we buy the shares, this is another example, we need to know that prices fluctuate in the short term. So, when we buy the shares, this is not a complete by, a sentence by itself. And in ne next exercise, identify the following sentences, whether they are simple, compound or complex. So, we start first. Meda tried hard to win the game. Second, when we buy Irene's birthday cake, we need to make sure it is chocolate. Third, I cook and Madhav sets the table. Fourth, if you like the idea, pursue the client. Fifth, Marin ran errands for uh, the Krishnan family. Sixth, since she left the house, since she left the house has been silent. We need to know, we need to identify the category of the type of sentence these are and here are your answers first simple second complex third compound fourth complex 
fifth simple, sixth complex. And here are your references if you need to know more of these uh, topics, then these are your, these are the books that you can refer to. Thank you very much.